Mr. Scrooge, sir. Who are you? Samuel Wilkins, sir. Oh, yes. You owe me a little matter of 20 odd pounds, I believe. Well, if you want to pay it, come to my place of business. I don't conduct my affairs in the teeth of inclement weather. I, I can't pay you, sir. I'm not surprised. Not unless you give me more time. Did I ask you for more time to lend you the money? Oh, no, sir. Then why should you ask me for more time to pay it back? Well, I can't take my wife to a debtor's prison. Then leave her behind. Why should she go to a debtor's prison anyway? She didn't borrow the 20 pounds, you did. Huh. What has your wife got to do with it? For that matter, what have I got to do with it? Good afternoon. And Mr. Scrooge, it's Christmas. Well, Christmas has even less to do with it, my dear sir, than your wife has or I have. You'd still owe me 20 pounds if you're not in the position to repay if it was a bit of a heat wave in August Bank Holiday. Good afternoon. Have I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Mr. Marley has been dead these seven years. In fact, he died seven years ago this very day. Oh. Well, we have no doubt that his generosity is well represented by his surviving partner. At this festive season of the year, Mr. Scrooge, it is more than usually desirable that we should make some slight provision for the poor and destitute. Are there no prisons? Plenty of prisons. And the union workhouses, are they still in operation? They are. I wish I could say they were not. And the treadmill and the poor law, they're still in full vigour, I presume? Both very busy, sir. Oh, from what you said at first, I was afraid that something had happened to stop them in their useful course. I'm very glad to hear it. I don't think you quite understand us, sir. A few of us are endeavouring to raise a fund to buy the poor some meat and drink and means of warmth. Why? Because it is at Christmas time that want is most keenly felt. And abundance rejoices. Uh, what can I put you down for? Oh. Nothing. <laughs>